Shout out Apple TV and today Guy Baldwin got promoted. Eddie Hearn just been in Manchester to witness Anthony Collins beating Ricky Burns. Firstly, how do you assess the fight? I thought it was a great fight. I thought it was technically excellent. Both massive skill levels. Um, I thought it was close. I had Anthony Nick in the fight. I thought Burns had the 12th round that he won, but probably Anthony by a couple of rounds. And you know, Ricky felt like he might have done enough. It's hard giving your honest opinion because obviously, you know, you want to say that. I had you nicking it, Rick, but the truth was that I just thought Anthony was was more active in the fight. Uh, Ricky landed potentially the cleaner shots, but Anthony throwing more. A close fight, a good fight between two excellent fighters, two excellent men. I'll tell you what, the atmosphere was unbelievable. I think it was the best atmosphere. It was. Yeah, so of, so yeah, yeah. What happened to your wing walk, though? What? I don't know. It's been James Arthur's probably going to be on to me going. Oh no! no. That one, James never, Arthur. It, it was. They've done the first one, but they never. <laughs> had... James Arthur. Yeah, but it never kicked in. It never done the old. Home time. Home yeah, yeah. Time. That, that, that. Yeah, <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. Well, was it, that, it? Was it the fight that you expected? Was it? Was it yeah. Up to the yeah, 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 it did. I mean, I think it got hotter and hotter. First six rounds. We were a little bit peekaboo, you know, working each other out, and then it just got better and better. 12th round was outstanding, 11th round, 10th round, you know, but technically really good. And I have to say, I said to Ricky Burns, I think that was Ricky Burns' best performance for probably three or four, five, six, seven, eight fights. And actually, I'm so pleased that although he lost, he showed that he's got plenty left in the tank. Do you know what I mean? I mean, they, they want a rematch in Scotland, and Anthony will look at his options, but. You know, the key was Anthony's come back off two defeats. You know, and that's a big win for his career tonight. The good thing about Ricky Burns is, although he lost, he showed that he's still, in my opinion, got plenty left in the sport. Ricky Burns celebrated, he thought he'd done enough, especially in the middle of the yeah. last round, to nick the fight. Did, did you feel that was the case? No, I said, I, I had Crawler taking the fight by a couple of rounds. I thought, again, giving Burns the last round, because I thought he finished really strong. If he would have done that, maybe from the 10th or 11th, I might have had an excuse for a draw. Um, you know, you're also, Ricky was up against it in the away town. You've got the noise, you've got everything. But I think generally, Crawler had the better work rate. And like I said, you know, Burns had clean shots. Very close fight. What is next for Anthony Crawler? I know that you'll take a little while to reflect on the options and stuff. I mean, look, what, what you does know, your heart say? Immediate sort of thought process. Well, listen, from, from a... Well done, from a Crawler and with a Crawler and Burns hat on, I'd love to do it again in Glasgow with a Crawler hat on. I'm sure he's looking at world title fights as well. You know, you've got Robert Easter, the IBF champion. See what happens with Linares, his belts, and Mikey Garcia. I don't think you'll see Mikey Garcia at 135 pounds again. You've got Terry Flanagan. He's going to box, what, in November, December. Could be a big fight in the, the spring. Um, you know, uh, me personally, I'd like to see it again. But, yeah, listen, it's Scotland. They'd raise the roof for it again, but, you know, it's... He won the fight, um, he makes the decisions and Joe will see what he wants to do, but I think that was the right fight for both men tonight, you know, and, and um, I think although it was very intense, very high work rate, you know, it, wasn't, it wasn't brutal enough for either of them to turn around and say, you know, maybe I'm, I'm done in this fault. And Ricky Burns, I thought, looked fresh, looked good, looked good be being back at lightweight, finished the fight strong. In his 49th contest. Exactly. Well, well he's now, you know one thing's for sure, he's going to make number 50. What, so, barring the re immediate rematch of Anthony Quala, what mm. options are there for Ricky Burns? What do you feel would Again, be a good America are always fight? asking for Ricky Burns to go over there because he's a great name, he's a free weight world champion. You've got the Luke Campbell fight as well for either men to look at, but you know, I think maybe Luke Campbell wants to go up to Scotland and fight Ricky Burns. Maybe Andy Quala wants to fight Luke Campbell. One thing's for sure, Anthony has more options moving forward than Ricky. But Ricky has shown that he still has options in the sport. And again, I thought it was a really good performance. Talk a little bit firstly on Sam Eggett's defeat to the mm. wound. He looked very, very gaunt at the weight, at the weight, yeah. having to remove garments to get to the weight. Garments? Do you mean he's. Underwear pants? garments. Yeah. It don't okay. sound, if I say pants, uh -huh. it don't sound good. Yeah. <laughs> You know I, mean? um, I think Sam Eggington, it's definitely time to move up to 154 pounds. He's, you know, he's only young and he's been at that weight a while. Again, you're, 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 com yeah, you're completely right. He didn't look good at the, at the press conference, let alone the weighting. And he just looked flat from about the seventh or eighth round. You know, some people say to me, oh, you, you know, you're rushing Sam Eggington. He's European champion. That was his mandatory. I've got to be honest with you, and I don't mean to be disrespectful to Mamou. He ain't that good. He's lost twice to average level opposition. 
Sam Eggington should be dealing with those kind of people. When it was time to go on and dominate the fight, he didn't have anything left in the tank. So I think he needs to move to, to light middle, and I think he'll be a force at light middle as well. One, so, one fighter that people were impressed with, Gadget, from the social media responses was Lewis Ritson yeah, capturing wow. the British title. And some, yeah, I mean, Crawler's sparred a lot with Lewis Ritson. You hear a lot of things from fighters like out of their area. So all the Geordies were saying, I'll keep your eye on Lewis Ritson. And I thought it was a great performance. He bullied Robbie Barrett, who I thought was so brave, by the way, as well. Um, I thought it was a really so impressive. Real yeah, I thought it was a really impressive performance from Ritson. You got Cardo now coming back. Cardo against Ritson is a very, very good fight. Tough Spoke fight. To Ritson fight. after he was interested in what made him the most money. Whether that be Cardo, whether that be Dodd, that's what his yeah. options are. Yeah. Well, there's not a lot of people going to be lining up to fight him because that is a brutal performance. No promoter as well, coincidentally. No. Could he be one of the jigsaw pieces for the North East? Yeah, possibly. I mean, you've got Josh Kelly now as well, you know, coming on for the North East. So I'm sure everyone will be talking to Lewis Ritson and eventually, you know, sign with us. Um, and then we'll see what happens. Anything you want to add before no, we I go? I thought Conor Ben was stunning. I thought it was, I mean, you know, he got booed because the other kids sold about 250 tickets from Cheshire. And uh, I thought he's coming on so, so well. We'll take him, he'll be the first Matrim UK fighter to box on our USA shows. He'll box in New York on November 11th. And Crawl will be out there as well doing a bit of commentating. Do you think people forget he's only 20 and he's had a limited amateur experience? He's 21, James, but yes. So, just answer that yeah, yeah. Do you think people forget that he's 21 and <laughs> yes. he's had a limited yeah. amateur experience? But people just presume that, you know, oh, he's there because he's, he's, he's uh, Nigel Ben's son. And to be honest with you, originally he was. That's why I signed him, because he was Nigel Ben's son. Not because he had a great amateur experience, because he didn't. But he looked great, and I thought, it's Nigel Ben's son, we'll see where it takes us. Now, I believe he's actually looking like a really, really good young fighter. He's 9-0, and oh, still got a long way to go. He needs another eight, nine fights before he's ready to start changing for titles. But he's stepping up. That kid weren't bad tonight. You know, it was a good step up for him. And, um, you know, I think he, he's the full package. Unbelievable speed, you know, great shot selection. Uh, and he's, he's doing things that are more impressive now, little stabs to the body, moving his feet well, just, you know, blocking shots. He's learning with Tony Sims, and if he can keep his feet on the ground, I think he's got a great future. All right, thank you very much for your time today. As always, great pleasure to get you on the channel, and we look forward to catching you in Cheers.